Uh, welcome, everyone. This is Brian Rowe from LS NTAP. Thank you guys for coming out today for this training on Microsoft Outlook 2016, although it's also going to include some general tips. Um, we've got Sandy Rylander, who we've worked with for several years at Northwest Justice Project and who has now joined us uh, for the second year running at LS NTAP um, to do some trainings here. Um, well, thank you for having me. Um, welcome, everybody, to Outlook. Uh, we will cover Outlook 2013-2016. Uh, I know a lot of you probably are still on 2013, and there are so many new features that occurred in 2013 that are so worthwhile that we will definitely be looking at those as well as the 2016. Because a lot of people will be working in 2013 and 16 over time, uh, if you do download my handout, which, by the way, is under the handouts part of the uh, email that you were sent, you'll see that in the table of contents it lists all the different features, but it also off to the side of everything that's new in 2013 has a dash new in 2013 for you, so you could just look at what's new if you'd like. And then in Appendix A, there's an Appendix A in the book that lists the handful of new items in 2016. Microsoft decided, since they went to quite a new look uh, a couple releases back, that they wouldn't do that to people again, that they would keep the look uh, relatively the same, and that they would just add a handful of new features. So if you're switching from 13 to 16, don't be worried that you're going to see any great changes, because there aren't a huge number of different changes as far as looks at all, as you can probably already tell by looking at my screen. So I thought I'd start out by introducing myself a little bit, um, in case you haven't had a class. I uh, started out at going to UC Berkeley and majored in business, then worked for about eight years for IBM, and then about uh, 28 years ago started my own business teaching WordPerfect, Lotus, and DOS, and then about 20 years ago switched over to the Microsoft Office Suite. So I teach Word, Outlook, PowerPoint, all the different products, including OneNote, which is a relatively new product for them. So does anybody, in starting out, does anybody have anything in particular that they would like to learn today? Otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and start with mail. OK. Well, if you come up with anything, uh, Brian mentioned two ways of uh, getting our attention is to ask a question or to raise a hand. So we're just going to start by looking at my screen. Hopefully everybody's having no trouble seeing my screen, and I'm going to see if I can move this a little bit out of the way. The oh, there we go. Okay. So on the screen, you should all be used to already the fact that we have a ribbon um, and a quick access toolbar. Over on the left is your navigation pane, and down on the bottom you have navigation tools. Now in the past, they've had names on them, and now they're just little icons. So this is your mail navigation tool, so if you want to go to email. This is your uh, calendar, your contacts, uh, your folder list, or um, if you point to it, it should show you what the different items are, and then your tasks. Now, you may not have a folder list. I don't know. You can change what's being shown on there by clicking on the triple dots and then going to navigation options and deciding which ones you want and whether and which order you want them in. Okay, so that's all in the triple dots over here. Now this navigation pane, I like to always keep it open because I'm always moving between different folders. But if you say, well gosh, it's taking up too much of my screen, you can always minimize it by using this little arrow here. And then you see it sort of collapsed and you can still navigate to different folders simply by clicking on sent mail over here or inbox over here. So um, but I like having it bigger and staying on there, so I click on this um, push pin so that it stays there. And if you'd like it to be open but maybe not take up as much room, you can always go to the line that separates the navigation pane from your messages and notice the two uh, sizing arrows allow you to move left or right, so you can make it larger or smaller there. Okay? so. This is the new sleek look that they introduced um, with 2013. Um, 
but back then they didn't have many colors on the tools. I don't know if you've looked at your uh, tools, but that was apparent to many and they weren't too happy with the fact that they had reduced the colors and the color options so, so much. So they introduced color back in in this release. Not a lot, but more so than in the past. So that's one of the new things about 2016 is you have more color options. Um, if you go to File and you click on Options, notice that now you have an office theme called Colorful where in 2013-2010 all you had was uh, gray, dark gray, and white. So it's nice to have a little bit of color back in the palette. Okay, so um, on the screen, so over here, like I said, were the navigation, just some of the different navigation tools. Over on the right-hand side, bottom right, you see there's uh, your zoom slider, which was a new feature, and you can zoom in and out of your text, so your text gets larger or smaller. And then over on the left side of this navigation pane, notice it shows you the number of items you have. And that's the number of items that are currently showing in your um, in your mail screen that you're the mail folder that you're currently in. This is going to be important in a second when we do a search. You're going to see that as we narrow our search more and more, you'll see the number of items continue to go down. And so you'll see how to search a lot faster than you've probably been used to in the past. Another new feature that came about in 2013 was the red and unread view. Notice that up here it says all, which means you're looking at everything whether you've read it or not. But if you click on unread, now you're only seeing unread items. The way you can tell if an item has been read or not is if you look on this left side, do you see, as I point to it, it turns into this thick bar, but you see this thin bar is that it's read. Because if I click on all, do you see how there's a thin bar there so it has not been read? These all have been read because that bar is not there. If you want to change something from read to unread, if I point over here and I click, do you see that now it thinks I've read it? And then I can also click again. Excuse me, now it thinks I have not read it because it had that light blue line. And if I click again, now it thinks I have because it's gone. Okay, so read and unread is something new that happened in 2013. Also in 2013, they have a new search bar that is always visible, and it is much faster to find things than it used to be. As you start typing something, like if I start just typing T-A-M-M, -M, you're going to see that it immediately starts searching, which is much faster than it used to be, and it also highlights in yellow everywhere that it finds what you're typing in. So you don't even have to finish the entire search criteria for it to have found an item. Okay? So if you're following along in the handout, we just finished page 9 um, and pages, pages 9 and page 10. Okay? Um, We've talked about this navigation pane over here, but one of the things that we have not talked about down here at the bottom with the uh, navigation... Just, just a quick note, as we've had two or three people join us late, um, the handout that Sandy is mentioning is under the handouts um, tab on uh, go to webinar there. It's a downloadable PDF. Uh, it's Outlook 2016 training. So um, again, under, thank you. Underneath the navigation pane at the bottom are these navigation tools and something else that happened new in 2013 was this uh, being able to point to the calendar and getting what's called a sneak a peek. It allows you without going to calendar, it allows you to see what's coming up. So it says here I've got this appointment today which is what I'm doing right now. It says Wednesday I have another appointment, Thursday another one. So without going to my calendar at all, I can sneak a peek right here. Okay, so that's true of calendar. You can also sneak a peek with contacts. And notice you can have contact favorites if you'd like. You can add to this list so you can quickly see them. So I can click on the person and shoot them an email. I can click on this down arrow and actually see the rest of their contact information. I can edit their, uh, their contact information. 
Um, if I have link, I can do all the different link options, which are sending messages, uh, creating a phone or video conversation, all of those things. If for any reason I want to keep this on the screen, which I wouldn't, most likely, but you can pin the contact card, but most likely you're just going to get out of it and maybe use that contact some other time. One of the things that I didn't show you when you're sneaking a peek for calendar is notice that right now you're seeing basically calendar items for this week and I can scroll up and down. What if I wanted to see some calendar items for next month? I can go to whatever month I want and click on whatever day I want and it'll show me those calendar items for that week or around that period of time. So this is really a nice feature. Nice enough, in fact, that you might want to take advantage of another feature called Dock a Peak. To dock the peak, you can just click on up here, it says Dock the Peak, and what it's going to do is dock it to the right-hand side of your screen. So this will keep it open, so while you're working on your email, if you want, over on the right-hand side, you can be looking at your calendar. And again, you can click from calendar to calendar, you can make this area wider or smaller, whatever it is that you'd like to do to have that peak. If you decide you no longer want to have that peak docked, you can always click on this X and it goes away. So really easy to put on and really easy to take off. In addition to calendar and contacts being able to be viewed and docked, you also can do the same thing with tasks. You can look at tasks and, whoops, and if you go to the top again, you can dock these tasks, okay? And notice you can arrange by different things. This is by due date, and this allows you to see, to change the sort order from being today versus later, okay? All right, so those are, uh, again, new in 2013, those sneak -a peeks Out of office, um, the out of office is new in, uh, it was new in 2013 for the first time and unfortunately since I am not um, on exchange, I'm a single user, I can't show it to you but what I'm going to do is show you where you would find it. If I click on file, it would be right here, the out of office assistant. And because I don't have it, what I did was I went so that I could show you what that looks like found a place here on the internet so you can see it. So notice, uh, as I just told you, you'd go to File, and under the File tab, you would see the additional option that you did not see on mine that says Automatic Replies, okay? And so you would click that, and then you would get this new screen up, and maybe you've already noticed this, but one of the neat things that it allows you to do is say that, give it a start, and an end time. It used to be that you had to do this as you were flying out of the office trying to get catch a flight because it would start right when you set it. But now you can do it at any time and just say don't start until this date. You can also say I want to end at this date so that you don't have to come back to the office and then say yes I'm now back in the office and therefore start you can automatically set a start and an end time if you wish and then by checking only send during this time range it's going to just be within those two dates in addition you can select two different messages to send one can be for people inside your organization and if you click on this tab you can have a completely different message if you'd like for people outside your organization. Okay, so those are some really nice new features that happened in 2013 that you may or may not know about. Okay, um, let's see, so the other thing we have which we're going to look at in a little bit is the quick access toolbar which you probably have up here above your ribbon. The quick access toolbar is where you can put tools that you want to use all the time. Because as you noticed with the ribbon, if you want to find something, you may have to go from tab to tab to find it. Once you find it, if it's something you use often, it sure would be nice if instead of having to remember that it's on this tab or even have to go to this tab each time, 
you might want to add it to your quick access toolbar. Okay? For instance, some people would like to hide reading pane. And so you'd have to go to view and you'd have to go to reading pane and you would have to say that you want to turn it off, right? Well, if that's something you want to do frequently because people enter your office and you don't want them to be able to read your mail, then instead of having to come here, I'm going to put it back on the right, I can put this on my quick access toolbar. Does anybody know how to do that? Anybody that's taken a class from me before knows that the right answer for almost any question I ever ask is if you don't know how to do something, right click on whatever you don't know how to do. So if you don't know how to put the reading pane on your quick access toolbar, then all you have to do is come to the reading pane, right click, do you see it says add to quick access toolbar, and that's how easy it is to have now always be there. Very handy feature. So this would allow me then to come here and turn it off and turn it on very quickly. If you decide, hey, you know, I really won't use that tool much, then you might want to remove it off the quick access toolbar. So what would you do in order to do that? Well, if you don't know how to do something, you right click and look at that. Remove from quick access toolbar. It's that simple. Okay? You're saying up here in the uh, right hand corner you're not seeing Doc the Peak? Is that? Uh, Stan responded with yes. That's exactly okay. what he's saying. So what version of Outlook do you have? And do you know how to find out what version you have? He says I was trying to find that. Where do I look? Um, if you go to File, and I believe it's Office Account, then it should tell you here um, it might say 2010, it might say 2013. Well, just so that we don't it says hold up. Office 365. You have Microsoft Office 365? Okay, well, then we're going to, I, I'd say offline, we're going to need to investigate that because that's what I have too. And as long as you have, do you have um, your Office updates, your, uh, maybe you could click update now and see if, for some reason, you're on a back version. It should be updating automatically. Notice I have updates are automatically downloaded and installed. If that's what you have showing, then quite honestly, I don't know why you would not have the Docker peak on on all of them. Yeah, he says yes, it is. So it is on. Okay. Yep. Well, maybe what we can do um, later is do a join me session or something and take a look at it because I don't know. I've never seen that not be available. Okay, so um, going on then. So searching was one of the things that we talked about earlier. Remember I came in here and I typed in Tamara and remember earlier also I talked to you about looking at your taskbar down here for the number of items in the folder. It's not true that there's only 250 items in the folder, but it's the number of items visible because we have now said we only want items with Tamara in it. So it went from, let me, let me X out of Tamara, so we look again at how many I had to begin with. Notice I have 2,126 items. If you don't know what I'm going to show you next, just this is going to be worth staying in class for because I don't know about you, but I'm a really slow reader. And if I want to find an email and have to look through 2,126 items, it will take me forever. So the first thing I do is I click on, I type in Tamara, right? And it finds that really quickly. What that has done, though, is find it's found every single email that has Tamara not just from Tamara, but has Tamara anywhere in the email at all. And so it's, fa it's already narrowed it down to 250, which is amazing. That's better, but still a lot to read. So instead, if I highlight tomorrow now, notice, by the way, that the second I go into this search area, I get a brand new tab. And a lot of people don't look at this tab, but that tab will save you um, hours and hours and hours of time. Instead of just typing tomorrow, if I want to make sure it came from her and not something that 
I sent to her or just had somebody mention her, I can now click on from and do you see how now I've gone from 250 to 152 and now I'm just getting the ones that are from her. Now if I only want to see ones that have attachments, I can click on has attachments and I've limited it even further. So now instead of 150, 152, I'm down to 29. Now I would like to have something having to do with yard work. So I'm going to click on subject because I know I put it somewhere in the subject and I don't even have to type in all of yard work. I can just type in yard. And now I'm down to six items. Can you imagine how much time that's going to save you instead of having to look at 250 items to now just glance through six different items? That's a pretty fabulous feature. And all of it comes when you click in this search bar and then you can go to any of these items to refine your search. If I want to click on important, now it's only going to show me four items. Okay, so all of them are additive. That's why it's called refining. Every single one of them is going to narrow my search further and further. If you don't see something that you'd like to limit your search on, you can click on more and look at all the different things that you can add to refining your search. Really an amazing toolbar and it works so quickly. Now sometimes you want to refine a search. I'm going to go ahead and click on the X to get out of here. But sometimes you want to expand a search. Have you ever tried to search for something and you can't, it comes up with nothing and yet you know it's there. Well, again, if you click in the search box so that you see your search tools, this is where you can increase the scope of your search. Notice that right now it's only looking at the current mailbox, okay? But I could say I'd also like to include all subfolders or all mailboxes. So every single one of these mailboxes, it's going to include. Or I can even search all Outlook items. So if I'm looking for, let's say, Tamara, and I click on all Outlook items, it's also going to find uh, meetings with Tamara. It's going to find contact information with Tamara, everything. So over here on the search bar, it's going to narrow your scope. Over here, it's going to increase it, OK? And then over here, if you search for the same thing a lot, what's nice is it saves your recent searches. And you could just quickly click on some of your recent searches, OK? Any questions on any of that? OK, so search is a phenomenal tool. All right, and now we're back. You can see down here we're back to 2100. Okay, so that is on page 19 and page 20. On page 20, it also refers to categories, color categories. And notice that um, if, you, if you're in 2013, you're probably seeing the ability to add a category. Uh, color category and that was one of the things that was taken away in 2016 in mail. You can still color code with categories when it comes to your um, calendar and when it comes to contacts but no longer in mail. So it's not, so if you're seeing it on page 20 just know that that's for 2013 and before. Another nice feature on page 21 that it talks about is sending to OneNote. I don't know how many of you are familiar that you actually own OneNote. Everybody that owns the Microsoft Office Suite has this thing called OneNote. And OneNote is a phenomenal new application that allows you to take notes and create these little mini binders. Look at these binders. I've got one on uh, business opportunities, one on to-do lists, one on email, one on travel, and one on restaurants, just all kinds of different things. So you could have one for each case that you're working on. You could have one for things that you need to do. Just all kinds of different notebooks. 
And what's cool about this is these notebooks can be available on your phone, on your iPad, every, every place that you've got an electronic device, you can have access to this information. So let's say there's something in Outlook, since that's what we're working with right now, that you would like to have in OneNote. For instance, maybe you're going to go on a trip for business and you're going to take Alaska Airlines, so you have a, you have a confirmation and you'd like to save it in OneNote, so if they tell you you don't have a confirmation, you can say, no, I do. Uh, let's see if I can type in airlines. Okay, well, I'm not seeing a reservation. Let's see if I can find one in here. Okay, well, it's having a hard... Oh, I just found it. Sorry. Let me go back. Okay. Let's say... Um, I'm trying to find a... Well, it doesn't matter. These are just different Alaska Airline things. But let's say this is my confirmation. I can just click on it, click on Send to OneNote, go down to my travel tab, click on that, and go to whatever tab I want, maybe travel planned, maybe this is a trip that I'm taking to Hawaii in 2016, and notice that I've already got some reservations here. So if I want to store it here, I can just click on OK, and it will create its own little page for that particular reservation. If I want to add it to the bottom of a page, I can click on the page that I'd like to add it to the bottom of and click on OK. Either way, when you go into OneNote, you're going to, and I go to Travel, and go to Travel Planned, and Hawaii 2016, this is how easy it is to find your uh, reservation. Here's the reservation, here's the Hertz reservation, all of that sort of thing. So at your fingertips, all the information that you used to look at, every you'd look for it everywhere in notes on your desk, notes on your computer, notes in a file. I never have to worry about where anything is anymore because my entire life is now in OneNote. It's so handy to have everything in one place. So that is integrated right into Outlook right here. Okay? Okay. Back to... Um, email. We already covered read and unread, which is on page 23, and, and seeing those. Now we're going to look at page tw uh, bottom of 23, uh, that all you have to do is click on an email in order to read it over on the right. And that's been true for a long time. But some of the new things are you can click on an attachment if you want to, and preview it right in the preview pane. See this? Okay, we're going to, I'm going to look at another attachment here. This is just a Word document. Let's look and see if that will work for PowerPoint. Let's first of all, let's look at just those items that have attachments. So if I only want to see items with attachments, do you see this neat filter email button? I can click on that. Click on Has Attachments, and now it's just going to look for attachments. Okay. And let's see if I can find one real quick here that has a PowerPoint. I'm not seeing the PowerPoint. Oh, here it is. Here we go. Here's a PowerPoint one. All I have to do is click shows me not just the first screen of PowerPoint, but the entire PowerPoint presentation, which is pretty cool. Now you may say, well, how do I get back to my message? You can either click on the message or click on back to message, and then you can read the message. Those of you, when you get to 2016, you may notice that this looks different than you've ever seen it before. It used to just be a small button that would say the name of the item, but now notice it's a large button and it has a drop-down. 
If you click on the drop down, notice that it has lots of different options, including save as, which will just save the one, or save all attachments. So if you had 16 attachments, you could save them all here. Or you can also remove attachments. So attachment handling has become a lot easier because everything is right here on the drop down arrow. Okay. Another thing that's new with 2013 was the ability to do what's called inline replies. Inline means that right here you have the option to click on reply and notice as soon as I do that it says I'm in I'm creating a draft. So if I start typing a message now and then I click somewhere else, I don't have to worry that I'm going to forget about this draft. Do you remember how in earlier releases it would go to your draft folder and you'd forget all about drafts? Sometimes I would a month or two later say, oh my gosh, that draft is still in my draft folder. Well here, if you're using inline messaging, you don't have to worry about it because it's going to be in red reminding you until you do something about it that you've got unfinished drafts. To finish it, all I have to do is come back here, type some more, and then click send. Now almost everything that you can do by popping out your email, which is popping out just means that it's going to be a separate, <laughs> a separate screen which is what you've been used to in the past, almost all the tool options that you have without popping it out are the same. But there are a few that are on here that you won't find if you do inline editing. So there are reasons that once in a while you may want to pop out, but if you do that, know that that feature will not work. It will go into your draft folder if you leave it sit for a long time, but it won't have that nice red message. Okay? All right. Now, if I decide that I don't want to um, have this anymore, I can always discard the draft if I want to. Just by coming up here, clicking on discard, and it just doesn't have that draft anymore. So we've got a quick question here, which is, yeah. can I add a new folder directly from the OneNote link in Outlook? Oh, so you're saying when I click on this, can I add a new folder right here? Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe you can add a new folder, no, because there's a lot to adding a new folder, so what you're going to want to do, you can leave this up if you want, and then you can just go to OneNote and add a new folder either by clicking on File New or by right-clicking and saying New Folder, either way but not from this little pop-up screen. Because when you're adding a new folder, you, you have to decide where you want it. You have to decide whether you're going to put it on your network, whether you're going to put it on the cloud, whether you're going to put it on your computer. So there's, there's a lot to setting it up, whether you want to share it with other people or not, so they don't have you do that here. Yeah. And then there was also a question about, could you do a OneNote um, training? And I'm putting a link into the chat um, we have two past trainings on OneNote that have been done. Um, I'm going to put a link to the YouTube videos for those, and we will consider doing another OneNote in the future. Yeah, OneNote is fabulous. Excel used to be my favorite product, but now uh, OneNote is a really close second, and Outlook is phenomenal as well, but uh, OneNote just changed my life. Okay, so um, any question? Any more questions, or is that it, Brian? Um, that's it. Okay. So that's one of the changes with attachments that I just showed you here. There's another change with attachments that's in 2016, and that's when you click on new email. You know when you click on uh, attach a file, usually you would just it would just ask you um, if you wanted to browse your computer or whatever to attach a file. But now it will give you a list of, I, I believe it's 26, I have to look up, different uh, files that you've worked with recently so that if you want to attach something that you've worked with recently, instead of having to go find it, all you have to do is click on it and boom, it'll be attached. 
that's pretty cool, right? So now, um, another difference, and by the way, notice you have options here. You can change permissions. So as to whether somebody can edit or just view, and it depends on where you have these saved. Okay, if you have them saved and you go to attach a file, it's going to, if you have 20, 2016, not 13, so don't think this is a 13 feature, this is a 2016 feature. If you have it saved on SharePoint, your internet, that sort of thing, then instead of attaching the document itself, by default, it's going to attach a link which is really nice. So instead of having your inbox cluttered with huge items, you're just going to have links and everybody, if they're editing, they're going to be editing the same document instead of having a ton of documents out there and everybody doing their own thing. Remember I said by default, you can change if you don't want to send something as uh, a link, you can change it to being an actual attachment, but that would be the default, okay? but you can click down here. You can also, even though you are sending a link, maybe you don't want somebody to edit it, you just want somebody to see whatever it is you're sending them, and that's where you can come in here and say that they can view it, but they can't edit it, okay? Notice you can also attach it as a copy. That would be a regular attachment as opposed to a link, okay? So you have different options here. <clears throat> If you don't find, let's say it wasn't a file you recently used, then if you come down here, you can browse web locations and browse this PC. And you might have other options, like you may have browse network locations, that sort of thing. If you've got a network, I'm just not attached to one. Okay? So that's another new thing with attachments. Another new thing with attachments, if you do have an attachment, this was new in 2013, if you have an attachment and you send, excuse me, if you send something in your subject line that says see this attachment and there is nothing attached, you will get an error message or just a message saying, hey, you said there was something attached and there isn't. Would you like to attach something? Also in 2013, they started spell checking your subject line. Those of you who have worried in the past that you've typed in something incorrectly, they now spell check your subject line. And also in 2013, if you hit send with no subject, it will give you a message saying, hey, are you sure you want to send without putting a subject in? So there's a lot more checking of items going on. Also in 2013, when you start typing a name, have you ever started typing a name to send to somebody and when you look at the email address, you see it's wrong? It's an old email address and you want to get rid of it? A lot of people had no clue how to get rid of bad email addresses from this list. So what they did in 2013, they put an X over here to make it really easy to delete, email, uh, to delete items off of this list. Now, don't think that because you delete an item off this list, it'll get deleted out of your contacts. It won't. All it's doing is not showing up as an email that you've sent to in the past. Now, there have been times that I've actually deleted items on, off this list that are valid. For instance, this one right here. This is my husband, and this is the person who built our home. I don't want to ever accidentally send to this person. So even though this is a correct email address, I will often delete him off that list because just to make sure that I don't accidentally send an email to the wrong person. This happens a lot in organizations that people have the same name. I used to get so much confidential email when I worked for Seattle Monorail Project because the director's assistant, her name was Sandy, and people didn't watch that they were sending it to me instead of her. So by deleting things off this list that you don't use frequently, you can make sure that it won't accidentally go to the wrong email address. Okay? Okay, now 
if I send to that, if I send, let's say, to Roger McPherson again, he will get added to the list, so I may have to remove him again, but since I don't do it that often, it's not a big issue. Okay. Another new thing in 2013 people may not have known about, under this by date, by date allows you to sort by lots of different things. So instead of sorting by date, I might want to sort by from. Let's see what that does. Notice sorting by from is now sorting by the name of the sender. Now sometimes it would be nice to see all of your senders names really quickly. One way to do that, notice I've got a little arrow here that allows me to close up each one of them or it's called collapsing. But that would take me a huge amount of time, right, to collapse each of them. So how would I collapse all of them? Well, once again, remember I told you if you don't know how to do something, right click on whatever you don't know how to do. So on top of one of these little headers, just right click and you see where it says collapse all groups. So now, if I want to quickly look um, at something sent by my husband, I can click on any one of these and I can just start typing R and notice I'm already down to the R's. So let's say Brian Rowe, let's say he called me and I wanted to find all of his email really quickly. I could just type in BR and I'd be right up here and could click and see everything that he sent me. I could also come over here and create a folder called Brian if I wanted to. Do you know how to create a folder really quickly? Well, if you don't know how, right click on the inbox, new folder, type in Brian, hit enter, boom, I've got a Brian folder. If I want to move all his email over there, I can simply drag this heading. Notice as I'm dragging the heading, all of the email lights up and I could just drag it down to Brian if I wanted to. I don't want to do that, but that's how easy it would be. Instead, though, I might want to be a little more selective because maybe I don't need all of them. So I can click on the first, shift click on the last, or control click if there are ones that are not next to each other, and then go to any of the blue ones and drag over to Brian and they'd be in the Brian folder. That's how easy it would be to move items to a folder. If you no longer want a folder, you could right click and delete the folder. Another new thing in 2013, it used to be these folders were always arranged in alphabetical order. So you had to trick the system to have your most used folders on top. Well now that's not the case. I can actually drag Brian, now make sure that you see this black line I can drag that folder anywhere I want, let go, and do you see that even though Remodel obviously is not ahead of Brian in the alphabet, I now can put a folder anywhere I want to have it, which is really nice. So your most important folders can come at the top. You might also decide that Brian's a folder you use a lot, and you can drag it up to the favorites area. And what that does is it gives you a shortcut, it's not really the folder, but it's a shortcut to this folder. And if I no longer want it to be a favorite, I can always right click and remove from favorites. But notice what I put in my favorites. I have several different inboxes. And a lot of times I wonder if a mail actually got out of the outbox and sent. So below each inbox I decided I drag up sent mail and put it up underneath the inbox so I can see all of my inboxes and all of my sent mails right below each other. Okay, <clears throat> now the reason a lot of times that I sort by from is maybe Brian gave me a call and said, hey Sandy, could you look at the email I sent you a few days back? So I click on sort by from, I type in, start typing his name so it immediately brings me to all his items, right? But now Brian hangs up and I no longer want to see it in sorted order by name. I want to see it by date like I always have it. Well that seems like a lot of work for me just to find out emails that Brian sent me. 
So there's this new feature that started in 2013. It was called the uh, oh, it was called the social pain, I think, something like that back then. Now it's called the people pain. But if you look down here, some of you are going to see this and some of you aren't. Um, but it's called the people pane. Those of you who don't see it, you may have to go to the view tab and you see here there's a people pane or it could be the social connector pane. If you're not seeing it, you might want to click on either normal or minimized. But then you see this pane and right now it's not showing you anything, right? <clears throat> but if I come over here, do you see this little up arrow? It says click to expand the people pane. <clears throat> by expanding it, notice that it says Brian Rowe, and if I click on mail, it shows me all the mail he's ever sent. And if I click on attachments, it shows me those with attachments. I can also look at meetings that we've had together. These are group meetings, okay? Or I can look at all three. But I find this mail and attachments so handy because if I now want to look at one of them, notice it's blue, so it means I can just click and it'll open it right up. If that's not the right one, I can go further down, click, and it opens it right up. So I love this little pane. You can make it, whoops, you can make it taller or shorter if you want, and then you can just close it or open it if you want. Any of those things will work great. Okay, another neat new feature. Any questions so far? Okay. Another nice feature that, again, was in 2013, um, if you click on this by date, which we looked at before, which, remember, allows you to sort by different things, you can also decide whether you want to show things in groups. What does that mean? Well, groups, when you're looking by date, are these collapsible items here, like today, yesterday. Remember when I right clicked and I said collapse all groups? It's these little headings here. Okay? And when I was sorting by from, it was the name of the person. So it's these headings that allow you to collapse and expand. You may like those headings or you may say, hey, they just take up room on my screen. So if you don't want to see them shown in groups, you take that off. It's still sorted exactly the same as it was before. It just doesn't have those little collapsible headings. This is how easy it is to put it back on. Another neat feature that was added in 2013 is showing as conversations. Those of you who use Gmail may have already seen show as conversations in the past, but if you click on show as conversations, what it allows you to do is every email that you have going back and forth on a particular subject, it would group together as a conversation. Now when you say show as conversation, notice that you can say just for this one folder or for all mailboxes. I always like to err on the side of caution, so I like to do this folder till you see if you like it. And what happens then is any time you have this same subject, like email introduction, that's how it decides that it's part of the same conversation every time you reply back and forth, you will see that it's a conversation because you will see an arrow to the left of each of the conversations. To expand to see the conversation, you click on that arrow and you see some different items in here. And if I click on it again, you'll see that not only will you see items that were sent to me, but items that I sent to her. So right here, you're seeing, you see how this is italicized? So those are sent items, and then these are items that were sent to me. So this is in my inbox. These two are in sent items. Inbox, sent item. And you can follow the whole conversation by clicking on it. Here's another one that's converse, whoops, click on the arrow, okay, click on the arrow and it will expand, okay, here's another one, I don't know why it keeps opening up here, but here you're seeing all the different conversations. If you like that, let me tell you 
one of the neat things about looking at conversations. If you look at the Home tab, <clears throat> notice you have a um, this delete area here. And one of the items under delete is cleanup. If you click on the down arrow next to cleanup, do you see where it says cleanup conversation? A lot of people have huge inboxes. And one of the reasons they have so many items in their inbox is because there's a lot of reply going back and forth. So if I send an email saying, or if Brian sends me one saying, hey, when can we do a training? and I send one back saying, oh, how about next week? That whole back and forth, every single one of those items is a new mail message. And yet, most everything is captured in the reply, right? Every time you reply, you, most people just leave in all the prior conversations within the reply. So instead of having 15 email, all with repetitive information, you can say clean up conversation and it will leave all but the last email that has all that complete information in it. So a great way to clean up items out of your mailbox. Now, in addition to cleaning up conversation, clean up conversation will just clean up everything in this one conversation. Clean up folder will clean up all conversations in this folder and clean up folder and subfolders will clean up everything in the folder and all subfolders below. When I say clean up, I mean delete. So be really careful. What I do is I just I would start out by just cleaning up conversations and making sure that it's doing what you want it to do before I would ever even think about cleaning up a folder and myself I would not do clean up folder and subfolders just because that's such a huge amount of deletion possible. Now if you do want to do that, let's say you think, you know, hey, I know I really don't have much important in there, then what I would do if I were you is I would go to your trash and I would right click and I would say empty folder. So now your trash would be completely empty. Now, if you do a cleanup and you accidentally delete too much, you know that everything in your trash can came from that cleanup process. And it would be very easy for you to just drag whatever you want right back into your inbox. OK? So just be cautious, be safety minded, OK, with your cleanup. It's a great feature, but use it cautiously. Um, ignore. Ignore allows you to ignore conversations. Not a good thing to do if uh, it's something sent to you from somebody important. So know that what ignore will do is it will move current, notice it says right here on your screen, and future messages into the deleted items folder. Okay? So for me, what I would use ignore on so somebody might say, hey, I've got Mariners tickets to tonight's game, who wants them? Or this is a joke. And everybody seems to like to do reply all to those sorts of things. And that would be, for me, a great use of ignore. No matter what the future response is, I don't want to see it. So that would be a good use of ignore, also new in 2013. OK. so. If you don't want to see uh, items in conversation mode anymore, no problem. You can just click, take the check off of um, conversation mode, and you're back to seeing everything uh, just grouped by date or from or whatever it is that you'd like. Okay. All right. We've done uh, attachment preview, which is on uh, page 27, and we've done saving both a single attachment and multiple attachments on 28 and 29. And we've discussed the people pane on page 30, which is that pane right here in the bottom right corner. Another great feature that's been around forever, but a lot of people didn't know it was there, is a feature called Auto Create. 
What do I mean by that? Well, notice that I've got an email from Brian Rowe. And let's say I don't have in my contact folder. Instead of me having to go to my contacts and type all this information in, which I could do incorrectly, I could make mistakes or whatever, but whatever it is, it's time consuming, right? AutoCreate says if I drag from a folder, like a mail folder, to any other folder, like a contact folder, so notice I'm dragging right on top of contacts, you see the little plus next to my arrow? All I've done is drag this email on top of contacts, let go, notice it already typed in his name and his email. But Brian is nice enough to give me all sorts of other cool information. So if I want to put in the company, what? well I don't know which one is his company, I'll do this one, I can highlight it and then drag it to company, I can highlight his job title, drag it up, whoop, missed it. You have to let go after you've highlighted, point, drag up to job title, do the same with address, do the same with address. Now there is an extra blank line in this address, so I do want to make sure I clean it up. Just hit backspace a couple times. He's got a nice phone number. And really that's all I need. So all the rest of this, if you want to keep it, you can, but it I feel like it's just taking up room. So I'll do a control A to select all and delete. Or I could drag across all of it and select delete. Notice how now I've got this great contact card. If I want, I can categorize. Let's say he's a business law client, I can do a category. And then if I want, I can save and close. Now if I do that, it'll say I have a duplicate contact because I've already got him in there. But that's how easy it would be to create a contact without having typed a single thing in myself. So we've got a quick question here, which is, is the people pane only in 2016 and no. someone's not seeing it in 2013? But it is called the social pain or something like that in 2013. Not the it, they just changed the name of it. Um, okay. It, if you look under view, it should be under that same um, tab. Let me. I have a second computer here. Let me quickly see. Um, but sometimes it doesn't show. There is a reason for it not to show, and and we'd have to uh, look into why it's not showing. But let me see if. Um, what it's called exactly. I think it's called the social connector pane or something like that. Oh, no. It, it is called the people pane um, even on 2013, even though it, it has a couple different names. But it should, be, it should look the same as far as are you looking at view and you're not seeing this? Is that true? Or are you just not seeing it down here? Look at view, and you should hopefully have it here. If you don't, then we there's I think a couple reasons we could just Google what they are um, to have it display. But are you seeing that or not? Uh, just a second here. Because I don't know if it just turned off. Then then it's just not showing up down here. Yeah, it's not showing up in view, uh, but she says that she can. She's going to Google around for it. Yeah. And I'll let you know. You will definitely find it in Google because I've had to do that for clients before. Um, okay. Any questions? So this is one auto create, but it so and the way I did it, remember, was I dragged an email to my contacts, but I can also drag an email, let's say, to my task folder and let go, and it auto creates a task for me. Okay. I can also be in my people pane and I can drag an email to my, excuse me, not an email, a contact to my email pane and start an email. And what's cool about that is let's say I'm in 
let's say I'm talking to Lynn and I want to send an email to her and to Denny and to uh, Heather. I just have to make sure that I have my control key down when I click on all of these. See that? And then, and I do want to make sure that they all have email addresses. Then drag. Let me try that again. Well, for some reason, it's just popping up. This could be a new feature in 2016, which would not be fun. Um, there we go. Drag to my email. And do you see how all three names are in the two? So a really easy way to select a bunch of people to send email to. Now, if you are sending to a bunch of people and you say, you know what, I really don't want everybody seeing who I'm sending to, you can simply select them and drag down to BCC. Now, what if you aren't seeing BCC? Well, if you click on Options, you're going to see BCC there, and that's how easy it is to turn it on or off. And it will stay on for all the emails that you write until you turn it off. So you can write, I just keep mine on always. Okay? Any questions? Okay. So that's auto create on page 31 and 32. Um, we've talked about grouping, sorting, and finding on page 33 and arranging in order and inline replies. So we've done a lot of these things already. Okay, another new feature that you may or may not be aware of um, that was again in 2013, if I create a new email, if I click, make sure you click somewhere in the body of the email. There's a couple neat features. One is if you click on the insert tab, if you go to um, screenshot, I can click on screenshot and every window that I currently have open appears and I can include any of them in my email message simply by clicking on them. So that's inserting a screenshot, but what if I'd like to insert less than the entire screen? Well, if I have, let's say I have a um, something in Excel that I'd like and it's formatted and I go, gosh, you know how sometimes when you copy and paste things just don't look as good in Excel. So I could even go to print preview and look at exactly what I want to see, then go back to my email and I can say insert, screenshot, and screen clip. What will happen as soon as I click on that, it goes back to whatever I last looked at. So you need to make sure you've got whatever it is you want to insert has to be the last thing you looked at. Now I just drag across whatever I'd like to have put in to my body of my email, let go, and boom. Perfect look with really no effort on my part. I just went to insert and I went to screenshot and screen clip. Now, I love using this so much that for me, I would right click and add to quick access toolbar, but notice it's dull gray only because I've already done it because I like using it so much. Notice here I've got screenshot and here I've got screen clip. Now, do any of you have messages that you write frequently? Like, um, whatever, please contact me between the hours of dot, 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 dot. Let's say there's some standard messages that you send a lot. There's another cool feature, again in 2013, called Quick Parts, that if this is something you insert a lot, you can just select it. You can go to Quick Parts, and you can say Save Selection to Quick Part Gallery. You can give it a name. 
or leave it what, what you see here. Leave it if you want in the Quick Parts gallery. You can give it a category, like if this were an entire letter, you could name it letter. This is something I would call a snippet, and I've already created one called Snippets. So I could click on Snippets and click on OK. Now, whenever I create a new email, or it doesn't have to be a new email, but let me go back to New Email, and I want to insert that snippet, I can go to Insert, Quick Parts, and look at this. Please contact me, boom. I created another one earlier called Please Reply, boom. Isn't that easier if you have text that you use over and over again to be able to save them? Now, if you want to have, let's say, a complete email in here, then when you highlight it and you go to save, like I said, you can create a new category and call it letter or email or whatever so that you can have different categories going. Okay, and this could be called welcome, maybe it's a welcome letter or uh, whatever it is. Click on OK and then it will be stored. <clears throat> See, all your letters will lead together, all your snippets will be together. Now when you name these categories, just understand they're always going to be in alphabetical order. So think about that as you're naming them if you want to have some things closer to the top. Let's say you did this and you say, oh, you know, I, this is garbage. I don't want it anymore. Just right click, go to Organize, Delete. You can delete or you can, you can do lots of different things in Organize, Delete. Maybe you want to change the name of one of these. You can click on Edit Properties and change the category or change the name or change whatever it is you'd like on this box. Okay? So that's Quick Parts. Now I use Quick Parts so much that saving Quick Parts and selecting a Quick Part I put directly on my Quick Access toolbar so that I can easily insert these parts into an email. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay. So that Quick Parts is on page 44. Quick Parts can also be tables. You can create a table that you like and that you'd like to save. And so when you're done with creating the entire table, you'd highlight the table. And again, it's under Insert and Quick Parts. And when you save the selection, instead of saving it to Quick Parts, you could save it to Tables and call it whatever table name you'd like, like My Table. If you do that, you'll actually find that Quick Part under Quick Tables. Okay, so all your quick tables will be right here. Quick parts are a great feature that's not just in Outlook, but in Word, in lots of different places. Okay, so that's also on page 45 in your handout. Okay, we just did that. Attaching files. If you send photos, have you ever sent a photo? So I'm going to attach. I have a photo here. Yeah, random JPEG. If you attach a photo, sometimes when you try and send a photo, have you noticed that it's too big um, to send? And so if you go to File Info after you've attached a photo, <clears throat> do you see that you can opt to resize the image you send it to have it more chance that it will get through. Okay, so that's under File Info when you're doing a, an attachment. Creating a signature block, I'm assuming most of you know how, but they did move it in 2013, so all you have to do is go into an email, click on this down arrow, go to Signatures, and you can create as many different signature blocks as you want. I always create two, one called New, at least two, and one called reply, and reply you see as a subset of my new. So what I usually do is I create a new one, I click on new, and create, give it a name like new or reply, okay, and then click on okay, I'll call it 
new one. Just count something. Okay, and then you would type whatever you want down here. Change the font, look, font size, all of that stuff that you want, and save it. Okay? And then if you want to use it in the future, you can choose new one as your as your reply as your new or your reply, whatever you'd like. But um, I like to create the bigger one first. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one because I don't want it. But I create the new one, and what, what I did then is I just copied and created this reply. I pasted, and then I deleted out whatever I didn't want so I wouldn't have to recreate everything. Okay. Once you have those signature blocks, you can choose them by clicking on new or clicking on reply, or you can simply uh, select them on the fly by, so if I want a different signature block, I can just right click here and I can say, hey, I'd rather have the reply or I'd rather have the new. It's that simple. Okay? So signature blocks are really nice. The problem is, and they did not fix this in uh, 2016, that if you choose a file, let's say you're here, have you ever right clicked and said send to, whoop, okay, I'm in my, hang on a second, I'm in my backup, you go here, let's say I right click, and send to mail recipient. I think I was too low. Let's try that again. Right click, send to mail recipient. Where's my, oh, here it is. It came up with this attach. I'm gonna go ahead. Okay, so here, Notice that when you do that, whenever you send to mail recipient, do you notice that you never get your signature block? Not only don't you get your signature block, but even if I were to put my signature block in, do you see how none of the pretty stuff that I had in there is there? And that's because two things happen. One is they don't give you your signature block. I'm not quite sure why. But also, if you look under um, format text, you'll see it formatted it as plain text instead of HTML. So that's why you're not getting anything looking pretty. So I click on HTML and then I go back to inserting my uh, my signature and now I get my signature. But that's kind of a pain. So what I've done, as you might be able to tell here on my quick access toolbar, I right clicked on this and added that to my quick access toolbar as well as under format text I've right clicked on HTML and added that so whenever I do send to mail recipient all I have to do is click on this to make sure it's HTML and click on this to be new and I get my my signature really quickly okay so those are some neat things to put on your quick access toolbar when you're do creating mail. Okay. I don't think we have too much time to go into message sending options, but they are on page 53 if you want to look at them on your own unless there's one that you'd like to go into in particular. Um, managing mailbox size, I just want to point out really quickly that under file, mailbox settings, tools, there's this mailbox cleanup option that allows you to find old items or large items really quickly by clicking on find. You can also find which mailboxes you have that are just ridiculously large by clicking on view mailbox size so you can see which ones you need to work on the most. But once you've figured out which ones you need to work on, you can find items and then via this find, which will show up down here, you can start deleting items and cleaning up your mailbox. We don't have time today, but another new feature that I'd like to point your attention to here is this item called Quick Steps. Quick Steps is a way to, and it's on page uh, 59, 
in your handout, but a way to do multiple things to one email at a time. So let's say for this one, I wanted to send this to my manager, then I wanted to put it in a manager folder, then I wanted to delete it. I could, instead of doing three different things to this one item, I could create a quick step. Let me quickly show you. I'll just right click on this to manager and edit it. So right now, all this is doing is forwarding it to someone and I can click on the to and put in my manager's name. But I could add another action here and that action could be move to a folder. And then I could add another action that could be delete or whatever. Notice all the different actions. So you could just keep adding more and more and more actions. So it's a nice way to do multiple things to an email or several email at a time. It's called Quick Steps and that was new in 2013. So what we primarily went over today, um, due to only having uh, so much time, we primarily went over all the cool things that you can do with mail. We didn't get into contacts, but contacts and tasks and calendar are all in your handout. So if you have a specific question on any of those, I'm certainly more than happy to answer them. And otherwise, I hope that you've learned some tricks to make your management of email um, much faster than it was before. Brian, do we have any questions? Um, no, but uh, covered a lot of great stuff there. I greatly appreciate it. If you've got any questions, please feel free to click the hand raise button and we will unmute you um, or type it into the question pane. Um, our next training is coming up this Wednesday. I just put the registration link into the chat. It is on testing uh, legal documents for uh, usability and plain language. It is with Transcend. It is a new topic for us. Um, I've worked with them on plain language legal stuff in the past. I highly respect them, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, and give me a second here and I'll also get up the um, next training that we're doing with you, Sandy. I know we've got two more scheduled this year. Um, Uh, it's features across all Microsoft applications. That is October 12th, and the pre-registration for it is up. Um, I will drop that into the chat here in just one second. This is... Microsoft All Applications. And then, as I've also mentioned before, um, all of our trainings are up on YouTube, including a OneNote training that we did last year with Sandy. Our YouTube channel is NTAP Videos. Um, we've got over 75 videos up there of past trainings from the last few years. So go check those out. Um, there is a short uh, exit interview. Uh, or survey afterwards, please give us any feedback on this, especially if there's particular topics that you would like to see from Sandy in the future. Uh, thank you all so much for showing up. Any closing notes or anything else you want people to know, Sandy? Um, just the uh, Excel tables is going to be on uh, November 9th, according to my notes. And the way I found it so quickly, uh, we didn't get to calendar, but I just wanted to show you that because I start all of, I try to keep my labels pretty consistent when I type things into calendar, like I started each of these with NTAP, I was able to just go to the search bar and type in NTAP and quickly get that information, where had I just typed in Excel tables or great features, I wouldn't have been able to do a search quite so easy. So um, just something to keep in mind when you're, when you're working in calendar. And this color coding that you're seeing of calendars, that's something else that's in my handout that makes life really easy um, to find out things that are important or things that are dealing with certain people, like this happens to be a business uh, color, that sort of thing. So that would be something that might be worth looking up. And you can either hand color code or you can have it automatically color code your calendar for you. And we'll do that someday in a calendar class.
Thanks again for coming. I really appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you for doing this once again. It definitely has went over well with the community. We appreciate you taking the time to do this. Thank you.